Arthur Melinda Williams' brand new book, Eco Home, outlines everything that you need to know to make greener choices when you're building, renovating, or even just wanting to live in a more eco friendly and sustainable way. And it is really lovely to have you in the studio, Melinda. Oh, thank you, Mel. It's nice to be here. Prepare to be grilled because there's much we want. There's a lot of things we yeah. need to know about this. Okay. But first up, well done. First book. Thank you. Congratulations. It is beautiful. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Uh, I'm a, a writer and journalist by trade um, and um, I've always had an interest in sustainable living and the environment. When I was a kid my, um, my parents were really into the environment and we were always going on protest marches against mining and for forests and uh, I remember once dressing up as an environmentally friendly can of hairspray. So. <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> yeah, you grew up in a, a, in a way that really understood the importance of looking after the environment and yeah. after I graduated from journalism school um, my first job was actually um, photographing and writing for a real estate uh, magazine and ever since then I've been really interested in homes and how they perform and um, you know lived in a lot of different places and realized that just because a home looks beautiful it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean it's a really pleasant place to live mm. in. What I love is you've given us something that we can read from start to finish and really absorb or if we you know if it's sitting on a coffee table we can go to those quick things you've got those lovely sort of green squares of snapshots. One thing that really jumped out at me is our use of toilet paper and single use sanitary products and the sheer amount that we go through it, that must impact the planet surely. Yeah, it has um, it has a huge impact on the planet, um, and and not a really pleasant one to talk about, unfortunately. No. Um, you know, I was reading an article recently about um, I think it was Whanganui, um no, sorry, Tauranga, and was saying that um, every week they pull um, two tons <laughs> of gunked up toilet paper and sanitary products out of the. Yeah. The sewers, you know, so you can only imagine what something like Auckland's going mm. through. That's, yeah, it's not nice to think about. Absolutely. No, I can't imagine that. That's pretty gross. I'm actually using recycled toilet paper at the moment, though, at home. Um, so what are the main principles, then, of sustainable living? Okay. Uh, the first thing uh, the first thing that um, you've got to think about is that actually, when you're talking about an eco-home, is that it's actually got to be good for the people who live in the home. Mm. So it's got to be warm, it's got to be dry, so not a lot of moisture in the house, um, and it's got to be well ventilated, so you get a lot, a lot of fresh air through, sta stale air and, and um, out. It's going to use um, resources, um, sorry, materials um, that are as um, friendly as possible to the planet and that are non-toxic. Um, it's going to use resources efficiently as possible, you know, water, electricity, gas, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's going to be a, a place where you feel more connected to nature. So bringing nature into the home in some way, um, you know, because uh, uh, humans have a real need for connection to nature, that's called biophilia. It's, mm. it's, you know, it's born in us. So the book deals with renovating. Uh, also, if you're doing a build, getting, mm -hmm. you know, your your workmen or workwomen on on board with that as well. But if you were going to give us the top tips to start with a renovation or a build, where would you start? What are your kind of key points for that? Okay. Well, the first thing is a lot of people don't know necessarily what issues their homes are facing, you know, in terms of um, trying to turn your home into an eco-home. So the first thing you do, you can do is get some good advice on that. And that will really depend on your own individual home and when it was built and where you live and all that sort of thing. So there's an amazing service that runs through councils throughout New Zealand called the Eco Design Advisor Service. And you can contact them and get an Eco Design Advisor to come out to your house for a couple of hours and take a really good look around your property and tell you all of the areas that are going to help turn your home into a more sustainable and eco-friendly home. So that's a really great place to start. Wow. I didn't know about that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of people don't know about it. Um, so in the second thing that, that a lot of homes are going to suffer from is poor insulation. So that's something that you should definitely look into, see what the insulation levels are, you're in, are in your home, because that's the sort of thing that you don't see when you're buying a new home. You don't get a chance to kind of have a poke around in the walls. So check the insulation levels in your home because that makes a really big difference. You know, if your home is not well insulated, it doesn't matter how much you heat it, mm. you're never going to get it really warm. It's like putting an electric blanket on your bed and then not having a, a duvet, you know, the heat's just going to keep flowing out. Yeah. Um, the 
and also your windows as well you know a lot of windows we love our big open plan living and everything yeah. in New Zealand and a lot of windows are only single pane windows and heat just flows straight out through those. Oh it certainly does um, as well as having the big picture in the book tree you've got like as Brian was saying all the little green boxes the small things mm. about how you can make things more efficient in your home and anyone could do that right now yeah. how do you make sure that your fridge and your freezer are running efficiently? Okay well it's just all about the amount that you're stocking them not understocking them which could be a problem or not overstocking them so with your fridge you need it to be three quarters full um, don't stuff too many things in them because your fridge is trying to have to work too hard with your freezer it's a much lower temperature so you want to keep that one stocked right up full so it's like a big solid cold block getting all the benefit of everything that's in there you've got a beautiful array of pictures in here like there's some absolutely stunning photography and some brilliant homes as well mm. that we can see from you know quite modest and small there to, to some more grand homes that, that really do look like a family could live there and, and uh, you know quite comfortably yeah how did you decide on you know what what to photograph what to keep what to have in the book there's there are so many good sustainable homes in New Zealand architects and designers are really becoming a lot more conscious about incorporating sustainable principles and the thing is that there's no one perfect sustainable home there are so many different ways of getting there you know I think a lot of people when they think of sustainable home they think it has to be like I don't know like a straw bale house with earth mm -hmm. walls and solar panels on the roof but those are just different aspects there's, there's so many different ways to approach building sustainably and you can have an ultra modern home that's a really sustainable and eco-friendly home um, or you could have something that's maybe a little bit more rustic or country style it really doesn't matter awesome hey Melinda well thank you so much for joining us no problem thanks for having me